All right, guys, we're back in the woods. It is the middle of October. It's a beautiful fall day. Uh, temps in the 50s, light rain, a little bit of breeze today. But uh, the cool temps are probably good as uh, this area we're in has some timber rattlesnakes. But with this cold weather, they'll be all denned up and not looking for a fight. So that's a good thing. I got my loyal uh, mushroom retriever here with me. And uh, my buddy Adam's going to meet us here as well. And I drove about an hour and a half today south into the Finger Lakes and uh, we're looking for some medicinal polypores, uh, specifically birch polypore, which uh, grows, really likes to grow on silver birch, but I also find it occasionally on uh, yellow and white birch. It's used medicinally. It's really too tough to eat, and uh, but it's used medicinally. It has all the great medicinal qualities like most of the polypores do uh, for immune system health and cellular health and uh, it also has some other interesting uh, survival uses so hopefully we can find some today and we're going to be searching birch forests so we'll probably be running into hopefully some chaga and uh, maybe some tinder polypore too so we'll get moving around here and see what we can find way up there we got it nice little cluster thumbs up <laughs> she makes you drink decaf <laughs> that's surprising so grandpa gives you caffeinated and mom gives you decaf yeah right that makes sense <laughs> Ooh, is that some chaga starting Yep, that's some chaga starting right there. Come back in five years, we'll see how that goes. Got a lot of, this is all chaga mushroom. That, the black stuff? Yep, mm -hmm. just starting to grow on this tree here. Yeah, come back in five years. See how yeah, it's years. really small. Come back in five years. The tree's got a little life left in it, but not much. Adam runs Cold Brook Mushrooms on Etsy. And he makes some awesome mushroom extract powders and tinctures. You're still making tincture, right Tom? Hey, I got some over here, Dad. It's a good haul. So this is the other mushroom I mentioned in the intro there. This is uh, tinder polypore. And uh, this also likes to grow on these silver birches. There's a real young one down here. Probably let that one go until next year, but... This one right here is prime time. We'll pick him. There's a couple good ones on there. Max, Max, listen for like five seconds. Yeah, that's we just three him. seconds longer than he usually does. Oh, man. That's tough, man. All right, so this log here has some older ones on it too. Uh, these are the, the fresh ones from this year. We just picked nice and white on the bottom. These are last year's mushrooms right here. You can see they're all black underneath, kind of scummy on top, so those are wasted. So that's last year's, and this is this year's. Ooh, hold on, I can't see because it's too bright. There we go. Oh, I almost caught it. It's a nice one. 
We're back home now getting ready to process our beautiful birch polypore that we picked here. And because I don't have a huge quantity, uh, I'm probably just going to use a fillet knife to slice these up. These have kind of a meaty consistency, so you can get through them as long as you have a good, sharp, stiff knife. Um, if I get a bigger quantity, I'll bust the meat slicer out. I have a meat slicer that actually works really well on these too. And uh, that also works well for reishi when we get a large volume of reishi. So you can also use that method, especially if you have a large quantity. You can get nice even slices that way. Um, but a, a good sharp stiff knife works fine. So um, I'm probably going to be slicing these up and brewing them into a medicinal tea with some other mushrooms. Uh, these have some awesome medicinal qualities like uh, most polypores do in terms of uh, immune system support and cellular health. Um, but the other thing that's cool about these birch polypore is uh, they're kind of, they have this real, like I mentioned before, real spongy, uh, meaty kind of consistency. And they are somewhat flexible too, if you slice them thin. And these mushrooms have, and a lot of mushrooms have, uh, some really good antibiotic and antiviral properties. Um, because it makes sense evolutionarily they're out in the woods competing for decaying substrate and they're competing against you know bacteria and that kind of thing so as a self-defense uh, and preservation mechanism they have these cool like antibiotic uh, antiviral qualities so the interesting thing about birch polypore is if you ever get a wound uh, when you're out in the woods and obviously the first thing to do is to clean it uh, as well as you can with clean water if you have antiseptic. But then you can take a slice of this birch polypore and just say my finger, say I had a cut on my finger here. Um, you could just wrap this around the wound and tie it up with whatever you had. And uh, that's going to, it's somewhat absorbent, so it's going to absorb some blood. And uh, it's also going to protect it and, you know, you're going to get those antibiotic qualities too. Um, so all you would need to do is tie this up with a piece of string or grass or whatever you had. And that would make a nice uh, bandage uh, if you're out in the woods and you didn't have anything better. So that's something to remember too. Um, but I'm going to get slicing these up. And uh, eventually, you know, we'll slice them up and then we'll get them in the dehydrator, uh, dry everything at really low temperature around 100 degrees. And then we'll be making them into some tea.